Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In this particular video, we're gonna be diving deep into a radio controlled charger review. We're gonna be taking a look at an entry level unit. We're gonna go through the specifications. We're gonna take a look at some of the features that this charger has. And we're also going to take a look at some of the quirks that I've run into with this unit. Now I've been using this unit for just about a week, charging anywhere from a two cell lithium polymer battery pack to a six cell lithium polymer battery pack and everything in between including other chemistries and it is done quite well and I want to go over that experience and share some of those features and exactly how this unit works so we're going to take a look at that I'll introduce the unit here for you this unit that we're going to go through here today is the C6D Pro it is sent to me from GT Power and if you remember from the previous videos that we've done the reason why I'm going through charger reviews and getting a hold of a bunch of these is because I ultimately want to take a look at the chargers and compare how they stack up when it comes to measuring the internal resistance value. So let's roll the clip here that I have where we unbox the unit. You'll see exactly how this unit comes right from the packaging. And as we're doing that, I'm going to roll through some of the specifications here that is coming on the side of the box. What we ultimately need to know about a charger is the amount of power that you need to put into it and the amount of power that you get out of it to use with your radio controlled battery packs. So this particular unit does work on a DC and AC format. For the input voltage on the AC side, you're looking at 100 to 240 volts AC. When it comes to that DC voltage, you're going to be anywhere from 11 volts to 26 volts. And that's a pretty good range, giving you the option of using a 12 volt power source, a 24 volt power source, or something in between. And quite common, you'll see, is around that 20 volt mark as well. Now, the charge current that you can expect for this unit is 0.1 amps all the way up to 12 amps. And you can access the full power that this unit has through the DC connection. That full power wattage is going to be 300. If you're only connected to AC, you're gonna be limited to about 100 watts of power potential there, which is quite decent. It can charge a six cell lithium polymer battery pack at just over four amps or so. So that really means a four S pack near the end of its charge is gonna be able to do somewhere around that six amp mark. So it's pretty good when it comes to charging those types of batteries because those can be fairly big and power hungry when it comes to charging them fast. So then when we get into discharge power, when it comes to the discharge power, you're limited to five watts. This is nothing, but what we do have here is if you put it into FB-DIS, this is a discharge mode that will allow you to take power from the battery pack that you plug into the main battery side and then discharge that up to 300 watts into yet another battery pack. So essentially what you do is you plug in a battery pack on the input side on the power side where you have the feed going into the charger and that is where the power is going to be stored. Obviously, if you place a high amount of cell counts there with a high capacity, you're gonna have a lot more room to store power and recycle that energy. A key specification here is the balance current and for this unit, it works out to be about an amp of balance current. So really when you look at it, you can charge packs from a lithium polymer point of view, one to six cell. You can do nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium, one to 50 cells and when it comes to lead acid you could do your 2 volt up to 12 volt regular batteries or 6 volt your 12 volt and then if you get the right cell count you could do up to 20 volts there according to the specifications I did not test the lead acid for this but I did go through some nickel metal hydrides and lithium polymers as well as life battery packs we're gonna switch gears and I'm gonna show you this unit in action. We're gonna primarily focus on lithium polymer battery packs since that seems to be the primary focus for the majority of you guys out there. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. Now that we got power going to it, this is the very first screen that we see. It comes up as a lithium battery mode. And from here we can go in and enter in different specifications. So this is the functionality. What do we wanna do with this particular lithium polymer battery pack? We can go and select certain functionalities such as charge and then we can hit the enter button. We can adjust our current. Let's go ahead and place a 1C charge rate. We're gonna drop this down to five amps. And from five amps, we're gonna go and select that this is a six cell. This is a six cell unit, so it's a larger battery pack. At five amps, 22.2 volts. We're gonna go and submit this charge by holding our button here. It does a battery check, and then it asks you to confirm. Six in series is what it's reading, and then 
It also, we have selected six in series. So those match, we can go ahead and confirm that. And then you can see that the power here, the current is starting to ramp up. What I do notice as one of the quirks here is that it seems to pause at some point early in the charge cycle and then it'll start ramping up. So it's not a huge pause, it does pause and then ramp up to that five amp mark. And you can see now the voltage starting to climb and then the milliamp hour that we're placing into the battery pack found right here at the bottom right hand side of the screen. We can also go and look at specifications by hitting the plus button we get the voltage readout of all the different cells if we hit it again we can see where we are overall 4.03 volts per cell with a total of 85 percent of the capacity so we'll go back in here and i'm going to show you the different cycles the different types of functions we can get with a battery pack so we just did charge we could take a look at other ones such as the fbdis we're going to take a look at the next one here which is the storage mode this is really good because it can get you to that 3.85 volts for storage of any of the two to six cell lithium polymer battery packs we go into other functionality we can get into a repair function where if you have a cell that is relatively low you can get that to be kicked up get that to be charged so that I, your battery can essentially be repaired as the name you know suggest there and then we have a balance mode which is quite common you could just balance out your pack if you have some unbalanced cells there and the discharge mode because we have a power source that's plugged in here we're going to get only a maximum of five watts out of this particular unit so that's really all the different functionalities that we have now let's go on back out of this screen and go right to the main screen that we have so here we have the lithium battery mode and from here you can actually change the different types of batteries that you have this is where you can access that and then you get into user programs you got the cell meter that we can go in here we can take a look at specifics of this battery pack you get the high voltage reading the low voltage reading you got the main voltage which is representing the total voltage of the pack we can go into other functionalities here if we go back to that screen we can go into the next one which gets you a program select extend function so we can go into extended things here you have the capabilities of running a brushed motor if you connect up the power here to the output you can run it at a certain voltage and cap it at a certain current and it'll give you the amount of time that it, you're running there we can also go into your constant current and constant voltage out so essentially this acts as a power supply we did a video with a power supply here before and this is actually going to function as exactly that so let's stop that and continue with our different types of functionality here if we go back to that extended function and then we look at the CCCV, we just went through that. Here's your warmer where you can go and do the same thing. And then you have your PWM in where it can actually read the amount of PWM that the unit is providing. We also have PWM out. This is where you can test servos by plugging in the servo directly to the side port of the unit right here. Pressing it again gets you back to the beginning. So there's our extended functionality within this charger unit. Now we got program select where we can save data this is if you want to go and, and save programs a program would be the type of lithium polymer battery pack that you use you can go and save it you can load data if you go in there and then you can program and set that type of data using that test now one of the things I do want to do here is I want to plug back in our battery pack and show you exactly how the internal resistance measurement is done here this charger doesn't do it when you are charging the battery pack it does it when you specifically dial in this functionality so I'm going to place the charger back in plug the battery back in here and then we're going to fire it by hitting this enter button and then it measures the internal resistance it fires up the fan and then it gives you a readout so in this particular test we got 108367 and this represents the amount of milli ohms of resistance we get on each one of the cells as it's listed there Okay, so now that we have this set up, we have our battery pack as the main power source here. And what we do is we're gonna have our battery pack that we wish to discharge plugged in on the right hand side. This is the main battery connector side with our balance tap. We're gonna go into lithium battery mode. And now instead of charge, we want to select the FB dash discharge. So I'm gonna select this mode and we don't want 12 amps. We're gonna go and do something different here. Let's say we go and discharge this thing at, I don't know, four amps and it's a two cell. So this is a very small amount of power that we're actually dissipating into a very large battery pack. Uh, I think this is actually at storage voltage. Let's see if we go and we can fire this off. So it's gonna go and do our typical battery check. It's gonna make sure that we got two in series, two in series, yes we do. And then it's gonna give us this screen here, set the input battery. The input is actually a lithium polymer battery pack, that is correct, but it's not 
3s, it is 6s, so we're gonna go and specify that so it makes certain that it doesn't discharge it too, too far down. So now we're gonna go and select that, and we can see that it just ramped up to the four amps there, and we got our two cell located there. One of the quirks I wanna talk about here further about the GT Power unit is the amount of power that's flowing through the unit. Now what you would expect is that you would have wattage that comes in and wattage that goes out in the function of charge. Less wattage is gonna go into your battery pack. What I wanna show on the screen, we do a test and just test the maximum capabilities of the charger at 12 amps, and I do another test at six amps, and what you can see is that that 12 amps actually is the current that flows from the input side of the unit, and not necessarily what's actually going to the battery pack. Now there's obviously very little difference there between those, those two different currents. What's really unique about this is the current that is actually specified as the charge current is actually the input current going to the charger. Very very unique that they decided to use that value there. Either way, there's not that much of a difference and 12 amps is a lot of power that we're able to get into our battery pack. It's really not gonna affect the amount of charge time that it takes for you to top up a battery pack, but I thought I'd throw this out there just because going through the details, I do wanna share everything that I learned about the charger. Well guys, that pretty well wraps it up for this video. Now stay tuned for the next one that we have coming up. It's another GT Power unit, but even better than this one that we're testing here today. Well guys, hope you enjoyed this. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in another one. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.